Welcome to another video from explainingthefuture.com. This time I'm at the 2016 TCT show, which is the place to see the latest and the greatest in 3D printing. The most eagerly awaited exhibitor at TCT has to be HP, which is showcasing its JetFusion 3D4200 printer. This is part of HP's multi-jet fusion 3D printing system in which a wheeled pedestal, known as a jet fusion 3D build unit, is slotted into a jet fusion 3D processing station. Here, the build unit is supplied with the necessary materials for the job in hand before being slotted back into the printer. Once printout is complete, the build unit is then returned to the processing station where objects are cooled, removed and cleaned up. This system facilitates a continuous production workflow as one build unit can always be in the printer while another is being loaded or unloaded. In time, HP have promised full colour multi-jet fusion printing in a range of materials. But as of September 2016, only a black material is available, although this does produce very nice and highly detailed prints. Also showcasing a new industrial printer are Strasysys with their J750, which was launched in May 2016. This material jetting hardware sprays layers of photocurable resins to produce extremely high quality colour parts out of both opaque and transparent materials. For those who want to 3D print the highest quality medical or other colour models, there is no doubt that the J750 is currently the hardware of choice and hopefully one day it will become possible to produce 3D prints of this quality at home. Several manufacturers of direct metal 3D printers are here at TCT, including SLM Solutions and Arkham, both of whom are due to be purchased by GE in a deal worth $1.4 billion. Also showcasing direct metal 3D printing are Renishaw, who have their latest Ren AM 500M printer on display, which is intended for the production of series parts. Also on the Renishaw stand is an R160 bike from the Robot Bike Company. Each of these has a custom fit frame that includes titanium lugs made on Renishaw 3D printers. For years, people have been talking about using 3D printing to make customised products and with the R160 we have a great example of such a product which is already on sale to the general public. Turning to the consumer side of the market, Zortrax have a very impressive stand that is protected by an imposing red-eyed 3D printed Guardian. On display are their very solid M200, M300 and Inventure 3D printers, as well as many impressive 3D prints. Another well-respected personal 3D printer manufacturer is Teartime, who along with UK distributor Denford are displaying the Upbox Plus, as well as the recently released Up Mini 2. The design features a separate filament holder and includes a heated bed for printing in ABS as well as PLA. The Up Mini 2 really is a very nice personal 3D printer and produces very decent prints for its $599 price tag. Over on the Lulzbot stand we find their highly regarded TAS 6 as well as its smaller sibling, the Lulzbot Mini. These Lulzbot printers are used by James Bruton of X-Robots who creates the most extraordinary things including this Star Wars power droid. I'm not charting my favourite prints of a TCT show this year, but if I were, I'm pretty sure that this would top the list. New to the 3D printing market are Polaroid, who have an expansive display of their Model Smart 250S personal 3D printer. This is a single extruder PLA only device, although it can be programmed to pause during printout to allow a filament change hence allowing it to make multicoloured models. Like HP, Polaroid bring a long established brand to the 3D printing marketplace and it will be interesting to see what impact this may have. 
serving the material needs of personal 3D printer owners are many exhibitors, including Fiberforce and Mitsubishi subsidiary Verbatim. However, my favourite filament provider remains Colorfab, who are showcasing a new semi-flexible material called NGen Flex, which was used to make the wheels on this racing car. Other highly impressive prints include this really cool automated prosthetic hand that I could sit and watch for hours, as well as several models made from their copper fill, bronze fill, brass fill and steel fill metal composite filaments. I'm sure it's the law that somebody has to display an Iron Man printout at TCT, and this one made from steel fill is certainly very nice indeed. Most desktop 3D printers fabricate objects via material extrusion. However, here at TCT we find several other desktop technologies, some of which are in the consumer or prosumer price bracket. For example, Photocentric now sells three VAT photopolymerization printers based on their daylight polymer printing or DPP technology. These comprise their LC10 for £699 or about $900, the brand new LCHR for £1,499 or about $1,940 and the LC Pro for £3,799 or about $4,920. Print quality is excellent and certainly more detailed than possible via material extrusion, let alone at this price point. I would hence expect the LCHR in particular to become very popular indeed. A somewhat larger printer that is sold as a desktop model is the new MCOR ARC. This uses a sheet lamination technology that MCOR terms selective deposition lamination to produce full colour objects out of successive sheets of cut paper. Samples on display include these presidential candidates output with a high level of detail, as well as these prototype smartphones and these 3D family portraits. Also showcased are these rather nice model buildings that may well appeal to model railway enthusiasts. In addition to resin and paper technologies, two companies are now bringing powder bed fusion to the desktop with their relatively low priced laser sintering hardware. The first of these is Sintratech, who sell a 499 euro kit. Yes, you really can now make your own laser sintering printer for just over five and a half thousand dollars. The company have now also built a larger and pre-assembled model called the S1, which will sell for about 9,000 euros or $10,000. Prints are made from sintering a PA12 powder with a laser, and as you would expect from the involved technology, print quality is excellent. The second innovator now manufacturing desktop sized laser sintering hardware at this kind of price point is Sinterit with their red bodied laser printer. Here the price is €12,500 or about $14,000 which is again extraordinary for this type of technology. Once again print quality is excellent and the printer even features an internal HD camera that allows print monitoring on an LCD screen. Walking around the TCT show, it's clear that the 3D printing revolution continues to gather momentum. In particular, it's great to see more and more traditional manufacturers now making 3D printers. In addition, as we've seen at the show, an increasing variety of technologies and materials are now arriving on the desktop, hence increasing the possibilities for personal fabrication. More information on 3D printing can be found on explainingthefuture.com. But now that's it for another video. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.